I am so flummoxed by this. So Kayvon Thibodeau was the number one prospect in high school in 2019, like number one in America. He went to Oregon. He did great. And as of January of this year, he was the betting favorite to go number one in the draft. Our first episode of the Ringer NFL Draft Show, I believe, was who would be the first pick, Kayvon Thibodeau or Aiden Hutchinson? That was the discussion, and Thibodeau was favored at the time. He's number one in DK's board. DK, you've comped Kayvon Thibodeau to Khalil Mack or a T-Rex and an F-14. <laughs> like, that's your comps for this guy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yet, despite that, Mel Kuyper has Kayvon Thibodeau sixth on his board. Todd McShay has Kayvon Thibodeau seventh on his board. Daniel Jeremiah at NFL Network, who's a very respected analyst, has Kayvon Thibodeau tenth. But not only that, Daniel Jeremiah has Kayvon Thibodeau as the fourth best defensive end in the draft. And it's funny because Thibodeau at his his pro day at Oregon this week talked about this. And Kayvon Thibodeau was asked, what is the most ridiculous thing he's heard about him or you've heard about himself in the last, sorry, I can't speak English. What's the most ridiculous thing you've heard about yourself in the last month or last few months? And he, he said his answer. This was his, I can't speak English. Oh my God. I'll play the clip. Play the clip, Greg. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. The most ridiculous thing I've heard is that I'm not the best player in, in this draft, honestly. And that's, other than that, I don't really listen to everything else, but that to me is, is outrageous just, you know, with the film with the numbers and, and what I can do as far as my ability, you know, I'm, I have confidence in, in what I can do. Okay. So DK, this guy, why Here's what a guy. Is with my voice? Here's a guy. This guy was number one on almost everybody's board three months ago. And now we're wondering if he'll even be in the top 10 is suddenly a question. Like what happened with Kayvon Thibodeau? Well, I think this is number one. This is a good microcosm or or macrocosm or whatever of just the dra- draft process. It's one of those things where sometimes you just get sick of talking about one guy because he's been sort of the presumed number one pick for so long, and another guy. It's like a, something shiny comes up. This is you know the Trayvon Walker, who we'll talk about later. Someone shiny, someone else shiny comes up, and we start to think, oh, this guy's actually better. This guy has a higher upside. Blah blah blah. I think at the end of the day with Thibodeau and, you know, specifically Thibodeau versus Hutchinson, which is going to come down for me, I think, to Thibodeau and Hutchinson. When I do formulate like my final top 100 before the draft, you know, who am I going to put at the very top of my order? I think it's going to, for me, it's going to come down to uh, Thibodeau or Hutchinson. And I think with them, the question is floor versus ceiling, because I think Thibodeau has a higher ceiling than, um, maybe any of the pass rushers in this group because of his natural talents, his, um, you know, physicality, he's three, like three down skill set. He, he can play the run. He can play the pass. He's all, he's, he's got pretty much everything you want. Um, but the consistency I think is not there that, or at least where some teams may not want it. And he'll be viewed by some teams. And, and this is the whispers. And this is basically, it's becoming a chorus at this point is, is some teams view him as a more risky pick because of his personality, his views or, or his, his interest off the field. Um, People are wondering whether he loves ball. And so, like, I guess with everything else being relatively equal between, like, Hutchinson and Thibodeau, obviously they're different players and have different sort of styles, but Hutchinson is is perceived to be, like, hardcore football head, meat, you know, like, meathead, grind, wants to just, like, rip your face off kind of deal versus Hutchinson, or sorry, versus Thibodeau, who's, like, interested in crypto off the field. He has a deal with Nike. He's... Got it, you know, he's got all this other stuff going on. He loves big chess. chess player. Won't yeah, big play chess me. player. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't you play me, coward? Um, so I think you know, and then along the way, there's of course been the the ability to pick apart things and nitpick everything and and, and holes in his game potentially. So um I think this is overall just like this is the draft process. This is what happens. Um, but also as we get closer to draft, I think some like coaches are going to weigh in and maybe some coaches don't like as like him as much or didn't like the, the interviews or whatever. So um, I'm trying to like not pay attention to it too much and just pay attention to what I saw on tape. And, and that was a good player. I think obviously there are some things you can nitpick, but I think he's going to be a really good player. And so I think, yeah, it, it's just, it's a, it's the nature of the beast really. Is this just media attrition? Just over time, this is what happens. This is the life cycle of of the draft season where we have too much time to analyze these people and we end up nitpicking and, and we skew right. these players' values beyond what they actually are. I, I, I don't think it's media attrition. I think it's league attrition, right? <laughs> yeah. I think Kayvon Thibodeau was the number one overall prospect in 2019 and I come out of high school. And every NFL guy knew this dude's name. And every NFL dude 
showed up at Oregon to scout Justin Herbert and scout Penny Sewell. And the coaching staff was like, yo, this kid's fucking nuts. This kid's incredible. This kid's so good. And then they know that he's been amazing for two years. And they've had two years to ask themselves, well, what's wrong with him? What's, what's, what's the kicker, right? What, 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 what's the, the thing that nobody's telling us? You ever see draft day, Kevin Costner, freaking, you know, just, just <laughs> Titan of, of media industry. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Say it with thank me, you pancake I've eating motherfucker. Hey, fucker. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin Costner just knows there's something wrong with Bo, whatever the fuck the, the first quarterback name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that guy. Not Chadwick Boseman, the other dude. So you know something's wrong with him, right? When you have <laughs> a guy who's so prominent and is so visible, they like, all right, what's wrong with him? And then he does stuff. He, you know, he he doesn't have great effort in 2021, as Daniel Jeremiah and Todd McShay have reported. Um you know, there was a there was a, a a a quote given from a coach. I can't remember to whom it might have been Bruce Feldman of the Athletic Mock, where it was like he was easy to game plan against. That doesn't even mean anything. Like, of course, he's right. easy to game plan against. He's the only good defender. It's him and Noah Sewell. It's the only two guys you're worried about. Like, yeah, that's how it works when he's a star and the other guys aren't. You know, but like you 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 end up creating problems a little bit. And this is a common problem that gets created, right? Somebody brought up Josh Rosen relative to Thibodeau. It's like, oh, he's like Rosen. Like he could be amazing if he just dedicated himself to football. No, he is amazing. He just isn't (laughs) gung-ho Rambo. I die for football guy. And that's okay. You know what this reminds me of in a weird way? It's not even Rosen. It reminds me of Justin Herbert. And I say that because Herbert kind of had everything you need in the Mm. player on the field, but not the personality you expect at the position. And so they started as Justin Herbert was kind of we'll study for years how this guy fell to sixth in the draft. And it seems like a large part of it was, why is he so quiet? Why is he an introvert? And it's like, well, each, who cares? Like, he's really good at football. Yeah. And I think, and I think Here, that Thibodeau is like an even more extreme version well, it's of that. It's almost like we, he's better we craft a narrative of what we want these football players to be like, what we want their personalities to be like. And when they're not that way, we, we knock them for it, which is not right. Yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, the Thibodeau question is, it's not necessarily, do these concerns exist? Because they do exist. Like, NFL teams have these concerns, like, flat out. But... I think the the thing that I think is interesting and just, you know, I don't have any power over this. I, I would say, like, if a team likes Thibodeau in the top 10, take him because he's a good player and he's got a really high upside. Um, but a lot of teams are risk averse that high because if you miss on a top 10 pick, you know, it can set your team back. It can make you lose your job if you're if you're a GM. You're, there's millions of dollars at stake for this person who's making this pick, right? So um, in those situations, with all the chips in, like they're going to pick a guy who they perceive is like lower risk, I think, in a lot of cases. And so um, I think that's kind of the thing with Thibodeau. It's not, I'm not even trying to deny that like these issues exist for some teams because they flat out do. Like th- we've heard too many reports now, there's too much smoke that some teams don't like his personality um, to even try and deny it anymore. The problem, the question is, I guess, is like who's going to finally, how far is he going to fall? Who's finally going to pull the trigger? Um, when they decide that the risk, like the risk is worth the reward, essentially. So, um, or sorry, the reward is worth the risk. So I, that's to me the question. I don't think he's getting outside the top 10, but he's probably going to fall a little bit further than I think anyone would have expected probably, you know, three or four months ago. So yeah. it's, it's fascinating. Might so, make it all the way to nine there, Danny. I, I, you no, know what? I, I think I, he could. He could. I Seahawks know. right there. I, I've come all the way around in this. And I, the Giants going from, the Giants have the fifth and the seventh pick. Mm-hmm. And it's this draft season started as, well, Kayvon Thibodeau will never get to the Giants at five. And now it's, hmm, will the Giants take a risk on Thibodeau at seven? You yeah. know what? Give me Kayvon Thibodeau at seven, please. 